Welcome to part two of Music Theory for Drummers. I'm Alex Biggs, this is Drum Bass Studios, let's get into it. So in this part, let's start with the most complicated thing where when you're just starting out, it's the most confusing and I'll go through it and that is dotted notes or dotted rests. Let's have a little look at the sheet. So what we've got here is your half note. Now, as you can see, a dotted half note is worth a half note plus a quarter note because obviously a half note is two beats, a quarter note is one beat, so therefore it is worth a half note and a quarter or you could think of it like I've done here as three quarter notes, so that's three beats. So that's how much a dotted half note is worth. When we get to the dotted quarter note, as I said earlier, we've got the quarter note, half of the value of a quarter note is a half which is an eighth note, stick it together and it's worth one and a half beats or you could think of it as three eighth notes if you wish. Looking at a dotted eighth note is worth three quarters of a beat because an eighth note is half a beat then you add half of that which is quarter of a beat which funny enough is the sixteenth note and again you can add the sixteenth to the eighth note and you've got three quarters of a beat. So if you think of it like in this next bit is one e and then the next bit is a uh, because you've got one e and a uh, that's that's four sixteenth notes that fit in a beat so you've got two sixteenth notes which is the eighth note plus another sixteenth so it's like three sixteenth notes it could be another way of looking at it so it's on the one e and and then the uh is where it is the same with rest if you've got a half note rest it's worth three beats quarter note is worth one and a half an eighth note three quarters now, another thing to look at is grace notes. Now, grace notes have no value, and you can see here that if you put it in front of a quarter note, it actually makes a rudiment, and that's called a flam. And basically, the small note needs to be played really close to the main note, making a flam. The Next one is a drag. A drag is two notes, so I always do my drags left, left, right, because when I'm doing a drum fill, I normally go right, left, right, left, or whatever I'm doing, so it's really good practice to get the left drag really good. And then you've got your rough, which is three grace notes, and a rough is basically single strokes, the count is still one in each of those bars. The grace notes have no value, but they're just really small notes need to be played quite nicely with the main note. Try and keep the volume up on these grace notes because the louder they are, the better they sound. Otherwise you end up with the first hit and not hearing the second grace note. So just a tip there. Triplets are basically just eighth notes that have been crunched into a beat, but because there's three of them and they're, they've got a triplet feel, you count them as one and uh. And now I count, instead of an at, I call it an er, uh, not to confuse it with one eander. Above, you can see that's how you count the sixteenths with an er, uh, but I prefer the triplets as one and er, uh, two and er, uh, and it has that bounce feel, one and er, uh, two and er, uh, three and er, uh, four and er. Uh. So that's a triplet. They'll have the tails if they're on their own, and the rest will have a three above it. Now, if you have a standard triplet, like I've got here, you put a three above it. Now, if there's only part of the triplet, that's when you put your brackets above. That's generally what they say to do. Obviously, there's no rules as such, but that's how I've done it. So if there's a nice even three um, triplets, I'll put the three. If there is anything broken up in it, which I've done an example of the three triplets with just the eighth notes, I'll put a bracket above it and then you know it's a triplet. And you can see the rest, if it's on its own, it'll be like that. Now this is a, a page taken out of my book too. You can see that apart from the eighth notes, the sight reading is kind of put into beats. Now when you're trying to learn to read, if you can think, well, each grouping of notes, if it's written correctly, should be in its beats. So if you have a look at the first bar, you can see the correct way of writing it, and the second bar 
isn't quite right what will happen to your drum part when it's written it should relate to the other parts of music so if for example an instrument in the band is doing a long note then your drum part will probably have a longer note if the instrument are doing sharp hits yours will also have shorter notes it's just so that as a musician you know what the band are doing so as the music's coming up you know that there's a long note or a short note so you can do a crash or maybe just a quick hit on the snare if you look at this one here you can see that as soon as you take away the link bar all of a sudden you get lost where you are so this is why we have the link bars and this is why we join them into beats because you can see one two three four beats in this second bar it's a bit well which beat does that eighth note belong to so again just another quick tip for uh, reading they're normally in beats so when you're counting it off or trying to count the sight reading they're normally grouped into the beats the drum legend you can see I've got the bass drum the snare drum now a cross stick is sometimes called a rim click it's really frustrating when they start naming things differently but basically a cross stick is when you go across the drum with your drumstick now you can play it with the tip that side but if you want to give it some more welly you can turn it around and play it like that now what I tend to do is place my hand on the drum and I grab it like that now that is a little bit awkward but I find it easier than like a lot of people hold it like that. So it's whatever works for you. Again, there's no rules really. But just remember, if you put the tip in the right next to the rim of the or the hoop of the, the drum, it makes a massive difference in sound. So I normally have it about 20 mil or an inch 25 mil or an inch away from there and the reason you play the 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 rim or the cross stick is just to tone it down a little bit a lot of ballads as in slow sort of soft rock songs you can use it or if you want to be quieter or it could be just a different tone that is what a cross stick is then you've got your high your mid and your low tom the crash symbol again is above the line a choke is when you crash and grab it Let's have a look at the ride symbol. So you've got the symbol and you've got the bell. And again, the bell is played by the shoulder. Because that gives a real good whack on the shoulder. The stick has a tip, a shoulder or neck, a shaft and a butt end. So that's basically it. The nylon tips are supposed to make the symbols a bit brighter than a wooden tip. I don't know if they're really kind of brighter, but they do sound different. So again, with electric drum kits, I would just get a wood tip. With the acoustic, you probably want both, but to be honest, when you play the hi-hat, you normally end up whacking it with the shoulder anyway. Then you've got your hi-hat, and an open hi-hat has a circle to show it's open, and then a loose hi-hat, could be many different things that people represent again look at your drum legend or the key to it and uh, this is how i've done it because it's kind of half open it's loose then you've got your hi-hat foot and then obviously the accent which we described before is play the note louder so that's basically the drum legend well thanks a lot for watching this part two Part three will be about time signatures as well as jazz and shuffle rhythms. That's where a lot of dots are. Okay, I'll see you in the next one. Take care.